Hi everyone. In today's video, I'm going to talk about how to eat the healthiest fruits and vegetables anywhere on the planet. Coming up. Hi everyone. This is Ernesto from Attaboy Cowboy and on this channel we give you health and wealth tips to help you be more successful. Now in today's video I'm going to talk about how to eat the healthiest fruits and vegetables anywhere on the planet. Now I'm in Central America, Panama and I'm here hanging out till the forest fires in California died down a little bit <laughs> and I started coming across some really cool fruits and I just wanted to share with you some ideas I had about how you can make healthy choices anywhere you're traveling in the world. This is what they call an apple guava and this is what they call a tree tomato. And this is a sapote. And there's all sorts of really cool stuff here because the weather is tropical. It supports a whole different type of flora and fauna compared to what we have in Southern California. And I went to a restaurant to eat and I saw some folks there eating apples and eating some fruits that do not grow in this area of the world. Apples need cold weather. So they're probably imported from like Washington State, even though I'm in Central America. Now, I want to talk about why that's important. Remember, we humans are organisms. We're animals. So we connect with our environment, with our plants, with our bacteria, with the animals around us and one affects the other. We actually have billions of different types of bacteria inside of our body. And that bacteria all play all sorts of roles in your immune system, digestive system, everything that happens to your body is affected by bacteria. Those are called microflora. Now we have good microflora and bad microflora. The bad one is what gives you like Montezuma's revenge. <laughs> and gives you stomach aches and stuff like that. The good one, you don't really know about because it, it's the one you have whenever you feel good. Whenever you don't have any problems, it's because your bacteria are doing their job in your body. Now your body has to cultivate and use whatever bacteria and enzymes actually that it needs to, to live and function in the environment wherever you are on the planet. So if you've ever moved anywhere around the planet, you'll notice that the environment changes. The plants change, the animals change. In fact, even the people change, they look different. So everywhere you go on the planet, you're gonna have a whole new set of microorganisms and organisms in general that live in that climate, in that environment. So let's say I'm from Los Angeles, which I am. I have a certain set of bacteria and enzymes that live inside of my body that help me break down the food that I eat locally. Remember, bacteria quotes everything. It's all over everything. It's on grass. You can wash your fruits and vegetables till the cows come home. You're not gonna get all the bacteria off. It's just not gonna happen. Bacteria is on everything. You actually have bacteria that live on your skin and they all have a purpose. You actually need it. You don't wanna get rid of it. That's why when I see people using antibacterial soaps and creams and lotions, Bad news, that stuff is not good for you. In fact, a lot of them are getting banned because of some of the ingredients they have in them. They have ingredients that actually cause endocrine damage, hormone damage in your body. And those key ingredients and in some of those antibacterials can actually cause different types of cancers. So some of them are in the process of getting removed from the market. One of them is called tricycline. But I, I usually recommend people don't use those. Just use plain soap. In fact, if you see kids, like I see kids that sometimes are really sickly and they're getting sick and getting sick. And the patients are asking me, hey doc, why is my kid getting sick so much? Why is he always sick? And I'll start asking them about their eating habits, about their environment, all this kind of stuff. And sometimes it's because the parents are overly cautious with them. They don't let them play in the dirt. They don't play, let them play in the grass. They're always washing their hands, they're always cleaning everything. That's not good because basically they're not allowing their body to get exposed to microbes and other types of microorganisms so that your immune system can develop itself. Like remember, if you've ever had a vaccine, when you get vaccinated in the arm, 
they're basically injecting you with dead or weakened viruses, like when you get the flu vaccine. Your immune system attacks those viruses and it doesn't really know how to deal with them. It's a new strain. Viruses can mutate every seven seconds. All viruses are different. Some of them mutate that often. That's why we have never found a cure for a virus. There's no such thing. We have cures for bacteria. So we have antibiotics. Antibiotics kills bacteria, but viruses we cannot kill. So we pretty much have to develop our immune system to defend ourselves. One of the key things we use are vaccines. Now you get that vaccine shot for the flu, let's say, your body starts attacking those and it's kind of like a Rubik's cube. Your body figures out and makes its own antibodies to be able to kill that specific virus and to protect you from it, okay? So you're trying to help your body get stronger. Now, if you don't vaccinate or you do not expose yourself to things, you're indoors all the time, you're gonna have a hard time staying healthy because you're gonna get hit much harder and much more frequently with illnesses because your immune system is not going to be developed. When you're exposed to things, you basically have like a memory. Your body, your immune system has a memory that, it's, that it keeps track of. And whenever it's exposed again to one of those things that could make you sick, your body knows how to deal with it and immediately remove it so it doesn't make you sick. So I have bacteria in my body, you have bacteria to deal with things that are in the environment where you live. That's why when you eat locally grown fruits and vegetables, you don't have a problem. But as soon as you travel somewhere, some of you might remember getting Montezuma's Revenge. <laughs> you get an upset stomach, you get diarrhea, you have all sorts of gastrointestinal problems from eating the local food. That's because that food has a different set of bacteria that live in that environment. They're what's called endemic. They're endemic to that area. And your body does not have that bacteria to deal with it. So basically the best thing you want to do is just start eating it. Expose yourself to it. Allow your immune system and your bacteria system to kind of grow and develop its own defenses to deal with it. That way you're able to digest it much easier. Another thing I mentioned earlier is enzymes. Enzymes are actually proteins and they cause chemical reactions. So remember, everything has protein, not just meats. Fruits, veggies, pretty much everything you eat has some type of protein in it. And these have enzymes in them. Enzymes are proteins. You need a specific type of enzyme to, to unlock those, to break this down and absorb the nutrients out of it. So again, it's not just the bacteria. As soon as you eat one of these, your body also starts to develop its own enzymes and absorbing the enzymes from the fruit or vegetable you're eating to break it down. It's kind of like a key. An enzyme, I like to consider them a key. Without that key, you can't open the door and get in and get all those vitamins and minerals. So allow yourself to gain access to those keys so you can unlock the minerals and vitamins that are in these fruits and vegetables, wherever you are. Now, why do you want to eat locally grown versus eating that apple that came from Washington? It's a good question. One, it's really bad for the environment. You don't want to eat stuff that's imported from halfway around the world. That causes a lot of damage. It's put on a ship. There's a lot of CO2 emissions. The other thing is I live in Southern California and we're blessed with wonderful fruits and vegetables, but we also have a winter season. So in the summer, I have some really tasty peaches. They're really sweet and juicy and plump. But in the winter, I go get a peach and they don't taste very good. And I look at the label and they're from Chile. Now Chile, and then, like anywhere else in the world, they produce excellent fruits and vegetables. The thing is, to get it to LA, they have to cut it off the vine while it's still green. And when you pick fruit when it's green, they can miss out on as much as 70% of the vitamins and minerals. That's right, 70%. Now, let's imagine this was connected to a tree. If I wait till it's vine ripened, you've probably heard that term before. That's why it's such an important term, because it really does make a difference. If it's vine ripened and I take it off, it's gonna have 70% more vitamins and minerals. And remember, plants are living just like you and I. 
So when this is connected to the tree or the bush or the shrub, it's alive. As soon as you pick it, it starts to die. These are all dying right now. They don't look like it, but they're actually starting to break down the moment you remove them off the plant. So along with this starting to decay, the, the vitamin and mineral content starts to go down. That's why when you buy fruits and vegetables, you want to make sure that you eat them quickly. You don't want to store that stuff a long time because the nutritional content goes down by the minute. Now back to that peach. If you don't allow this to ripen on the vine, it's going to miss out 70%. So when I get that peach that's been imported from Europe or anywhere else, it's going to have 70% less vitamins and minerals unless it's been frozen that's okay if it's frozen because they usually do what's called flash freezing they pick it when it's ripe and then they freeze it so it has all the vitamins in it but you're better off just eating local stuff now like i mentioned earlier your body is tied to your local environment so you're going to be better off eating things that are in your environment it's going to make your body much healthier you can eat things that are from another place as a treat every once in a while. But as I mentioned earlier, when it's not vine ripened, it's not going to have the same nutrition. In fact, I was reading this study about some tomatoes and it was talking about how the tomato could be on the vine for several weeks, but the majority of the vitamins are actually infused into the fruit the last day when it's changing color. So oftentimes when a fruit or vegetable ripens and it starts to change, which sometimes can happen in a few hours, that's when all the vitamins are shot in. So if you're picking it a month or a few weeks or days before, imagine you're gonna miss out on a lot. So again, wherever you are in the planet, eat locally. It's gonna be much healthier for you. You're gonna support the local economy. It's gonna cut CO2 gases because you're not importing stuff. And you're gonna make your body stronger by exposing your immune system to the local uh, bacteria. You're gonna be able to develop your own microflora. If you have any questions, please comment below. And if you haven't, please subscribe to our channel. Thank you. This is Attaboy Cowboy from Panama, Central America. Bye-bye.